In 1954, the UK realized that with the advancement of technologies such as air defense missiles and anti-aircraft radars, the new air defense system had a longer warning and striking range. In particular, heavy air defense missiles posed a serious threat to large bombers. Therefore, the Air Force requested the development of a new generation of long-range strike weapons, which is a large air-launched cruise missile capable of carrying a thermonuclear warhead and achieving a speed of three times the speed of sound. This missile, originally known as Blue Steel, was designed to be carried and deployed by the V-bombers. Avro was the main development company for Blue Steel, with other companies responsible for the development of the power system and control system. The name Blue Steel was randomly selected from the secrecy terms required by the British secrecy regulations at the time, along with similar names like Red Queen. Although a bit awkward, it was indeed difficult to judge what this project was just from its name. The designers originally hoped that Blue Steel would have a maximum range of 1,700 kilometers and a speed of 4.5 times the speed of sound. However, due to technological limitations at the time, this was not achievable. Another major problem facing the designers at that time was the lack of a small-sized nuclear warhead suitable for installation on a cruise missile, which meant that the missile would be quite large in size. Blue Steel had a length of 10.7 meters, a body diameter of 1.22 meters, a wingspan of about 4 meters, and a weight of about 7.3 tons. This was indeed a big guy, and was mounted using the semi-recessed mounting method on the fuselage of the Victor and Valiant strategic bombers. The missile was powered by a liquid rocket engine, which was relatively rare among cruise missiles at the time, due to the lack of solid fuel rocket engine technology. The engine used hydrogen peroxide and kerosene as fuel, and half an hour was required to refuel before combat readiness which was a very dangerous process. The rocket engine had upper and lower combustion chambers, with the upper chamber generating 24,000 pounds of thrust and the lower chamber generating 6,000 pounds of thrust. When launching the missile at high altitude, the large combustion chamber was ignited first, followed by the ignition of the small combustion chamber to adjust the thrust to maintain the missile's speed. When launching at low altitude, both chambers were ignited together to accelerate the missile to a certain speed, after which the upper combustion chamber was shut down, and only the lower combustion chamber was used to conserve fuel for long-duration flight. The missile had a maximum range of 280 kilometers when launched from high altitude, and only 80 kilometers when launched from low altitude. The missile warhead was a W-28 nuclear warhead, with a maximum explosive yield of up to 1.45 million tons of TNT. After launch, the missile was guided by an inertial guidance system, adjusting its flight attitude through control surfaces. During the acceleration phase, the missile would reach a speed of three times the speed of sound, and, upon reaching the target area, the engine would be shut down, allowing the missile to free fall and detonate the warhead in mid-air to increase the kill radius. Blue Steel entered service in 1963 as the UK's only nuclear warhead, air-launched cruise missile at the time. The missile itself had many problems such as poor reliability, complex operation, and long preparation time. Installing the missile on the wing surface of the bomber's fuselage was itself very dangerous. However, with no other options available, the UK had to temporarily equip it. In the 1960s, the UK was also developing a submarine-based nuclear deterrent force, which was more strategically effective than Blue Steel, as nuclear submarines carrying submarine-launched missiles could remain on station for long periods and launch missiles to strike targets unexpectedly upon command. In 1970, the UK transferred its strategic deterrent to the submarine force. As for the Blue Steel missile, the UK did not produce many of them. They were in service with different bomber squadrons, and in 1968 they began to be decommissioned. In December of the same year, the Valiant Bomber Squadron was no longer equipped with Blue Steel, and the decommissioning of the Victor Bomber Squadron began in June of the following year. 
By the end of 1970, there were no more Blue Steel missiles, and the Air Force continued to use free-fall nuclear bombs as the primary deterrent. 